Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to give a full review of the Within's Scan Watch. Um, so I bought this watch about two weeks ago, and then back then I did an open box video uh, showing you everything in the box, my first impression, and how to pair it up with your cell phone. And then now I've been using it for a while, and I tried all the features. And then in this video, I just want to show you all the features in here, in there, and telling you my opinion on it. Uh, now, just remember, this is a very unique watch. A unique looking watch is based on the look in there. It's completely different from most of the other smartwatches or fitness tracker in the market. So most likely you're buying this watch for some features that do not offer in other watch, and certainly you're gonna miss some features that uh, that are common in other watches. So that's why in this video, I don't want to do too much of comparison, saying I, what I like, what I don't like, saying pros and cons, because uh, you just need to know what you're looking for. You're going to get some, but miss some other things. So uh, first of all, the first thing I want to mention is the look of the watch. Um, they offer two colors on the watch face white and uh, black. So for black watch, the hands are white and then white watch, the hands are staying still. Um, so I bought the white version and then some people may say that um, the hands are not very obvious on the white surface, but then I haven't had much of issue reading the time, uh, even though it's two light colors in there. And then it doesn't matter which version you buy, there will always be, always be a small screen, and then the screen color, of course, it will always gonna be black. So that means um, in this watch, you have a some black circles on the white watch in there. Um, so they offer two sizes. So the smaller size is 38 millimeter, which is what I bought. And then there is a bigger size of 42 millimeter. I actually tried the bigger size, 42 millimeter, it's actually very heavy and uh, it's kind of hard for me to get used to it. Of course, if you are used to traditional analog watch, especially some luxury watch in there, you are probably okay with heavy filling in there. But then if you are used to other smart watches, um, I think you may want to consider the smaller watch. So 38 millimeter, the band is 18 millimeter. And then the bigger watch, 42, the band is uh, 20 millimeter. So just make sure if you want to change the band, of course, they offer all kinds of colors. Uh, you need to make sure you're buying the right band. Uh, another thing I want to mention is uh, on the watch surface, the glass in there. So um, you can probably see in this video, uh, the glass is kind of a curved glass in there. So of course it looks good um more give you more of a traditional watch feeling uh, but then the downside will be um you will not be able to put any screen protector in it um so uh, i kind of worry about the scratching or bumping into something but then we'll see so just one thing to consider now the second thing i want to mention is operation um, certainly it's very simple because this watch only have one screen and one button in there and then the rest of it just a uh, analog watch. So the screen is kind of small, of course it's, got, it's not going to show a lot of information. So if you are used to other small watches with big screen like Apple Watch, you need to like read news, read stock market, read Facebook posts, then I don't think you can see much in here. But then for me, I actually don't rely too much on my smart watches. The only two apps that send not notification to my watch is uh, I only send phone calls and text message on the screen. So uh, it's okay for me actually. So for phone calls, of course, it's just gonna show the person's name on it. And then for text message, uh, it will actually scroll the text for you, like slowly you, you can read. And then if you miss it, then you kind of want to read more. Um, this watch is actually, this button is actually a, work as a dial. You can like uh, kind of rotate it, kind of scrolling text back and forth to help you to read text message if you want to. Um, so as you can see, the screen is off most of the time, 
And uh, if you want to see the content, I think there's one way you kind of like snap your wrist, kind of like the motion you use to read your watch. And then you see the uh, time and today's date. And um, to scroll it, um, it will see like your, your, your heart rate. Uh, this is the ECG feature, this is a workout. Uh, you can certainly customize how many um, items you want to see in the manual. So, so just remember, uh, there is actually no way to have always on screen. The screen will always turn off, uh, timed off after a certain time. Uh, there is option to keep the screen on during workout. So for example, if during the workout you want to constantly monitor your heart rate, uh, you can actually keep the screen always on during the workout, but then not uh, in the uh, rest of the time. So uh, then I want to talk about the only button in here. So the button is, uh, it works as um, like a push button uh, if you want to select anything. And then you can also scroll it up and down to, to make your uh, scrolling through the manuals in there. Uh, there is also for push, there are also short push and a long push. Uh, depending on which manual you are at, you can also customize some quick uh, path in there. Uh, one thing I kind of find uh, annoying is um, since this button is right in the center, I find a lot of time I may accidentally push it. Like say if I do this kind of motion or if I'm in any workout doing yoga, uh, my, my wrist is going to be like this and sometimes it will accidentally push the button. Uh, maybe you can rotate to the side or this way or make it maybe like push it higher. Uh, to to help. So, all right. Um, the third thing I want to mention is this uh, this this watch, like the rest of the fitness trackers, it offers some basic tracking. Like it will track the number of steps you did uh, on the day, and also the number of floors, uh, which is I think pretty common among all the other fitness trackers. So I don't want to talk too much in here. Um, and uh, actually, maybe I can show you on the app in here. So you see in the app, it shows um, uh, like the number of steps I took today and also the number of floors in there. Um, so the fourth thing I want to talk about is a sleep tracking. So in sleep, um, I can show you in the app. Of course, you have to wear the watch uh, into sleep to track that. Um, so in sleep tracking, it will track and tell you different stages, light and deep. One thing is kind of weird is uh, if you use other watches, you, you notice that uh, uh, when they do sleep tracking, they have light and deep, and they also have something called REM sleep. It's REM sleep is considered the one you are dreaming. Um, so when I use other watch, they always get, they always give three stages: light, deep, and the REM. But then I don't know why in this watch there's only light and deep. Um, but sometimes I find uh, the other watch REM sleep is not accurate anyway. Uh, maybe in this watch they just consider REM as part of the deep sleep. Uh, so it, it just there's only two stages in there. Uh, one thing I really like is um, the every night of sleep they give you a sleep score. So during the time you can compare to yourself and see uh, how much of your sleep quality improved. Maybe you can correlate that with some activities you did during the day, um, and uh, you can even see some suggestions to say. Uh, this is the amount of deep sleep you got and compared to other people and what's recommended so that you know where you are. So that's something I, I really like. Um, during the sleep, I think there's also um, there's a sleep heart rate in there. Um, you can also turn on the, um, the like they call it uh, ox oxygen level, like a pulse oxygen. Here, here is sleep oxygen in there. Uh, this is something that's not on by default. I think they turn it off to save uh, battery, uh, but then I turn it on. When you turn it on, uh, this feature is trying to measure your ox oxygen level in your blood every 30 minutes, and then it can even detect some uh, breath disturbance in there. So uh, I like turning it on because they offer this feature anyway, but then just remember it may drain some battery more fastly. So. 
All right, uh, the, the number five thing I want to mention is a workout. So this is a fitness tracker, so it does offer some features that allow you to track your workout. Uh, one thing I want to mention is um, this is not a GPS watch, meaning this watch itself does not have a GPS chip. You cannot just go out and uh, without your cell phone and uh, assume the watch will track. To be able to track anything, uh, you will actually need to bring your cell phone and it use something called a connected GPS. What it means is um, um, the watch will actually use a GPS reception from your cell phone to track the location, track your pace in there uh, instead of the watch itself. And then certainly there's upside and downside of it, right? And then I guess the downside means uh, you can't just go out with your watch with your, your cell phone. It's not going to track anything. And then also, if your phone doesn't have any GPS reception, then certainly you don't get anything. But then the upside means uh, any GPS workout, any outside workout, it's not going to drain any better from your watch. So, for example, some people say if you want to run an ultra marathon, you want to run for 10 hours outside or go for a hike. Then um, if you use, use a GPS watch like Garmin, then you're going to have to worry about the battery life on your watch because doing GPS tracking consume a lot of battery. But then in this watch, you don't have to worry about it. You, you have to worry about your phone and make sure it, it can last that long, but then the battery of the watch is not going to drain much because it's not using the watch to track. Um, so um, it does offer something called auto... Uh, I don't remember the name. It means even if you don't track any workout, uh, if you say if you just go out for a walk or run, the watch will automatically recognize what you are doing and try to track this activity automatically. Uh, that feature, I don't know, sometimes works, sometimes not working. Uh, for example, I think today this one, I don't think I tracked it, but then somehow the watch knows what I'm doing. So it's recorded something here, like a pace or something. But then I think some other time I went for a watch, walk but then the watch um, tracked me as I was riding the bike one time. So, um, so if you want to track anything, make sure you start the workout yourself. So uh, I'm just going to show you how to do this. So to start a workout, I actually put a, uh, like a quick button in here. If you do a long press, you're going to a workout in there. And certainly if you're going to do yoga, it's not going to use any GPS. But then if you do walking, and then we're going to start a walk and then it will actually trigger something. And then this is um, what your app going to look like on the phone. So during this time, I don't think you are able to use your app because your app is tracking the walk in there. And then you can actually like stop the workout here or stop the workout on your watch. And then during this time, say... <clears throat> If I just want to like stop my workout. And then you see my phone immediately knows and uh, so the workout is stopped. So, um, all right. So the number six is about the uh, heart rate monitor. So this watch does offer a heart rate monitor in there so it can uh, um, track your heart rate. Um, during sleep, during the day. Um, I'm not sure whether the tracking is continuous a lot uh, or not because sometimes um, when I try to read my heart rate, you see here, it's showing as a three minutes go. And then if you wait a little bit, it start to do some measurement and then it will update later. So uh, I'm not sure whether it's doing continuous tracking or not. So just one thing to me. Yeah, see. And now it's updated. So that's about heart rate. I think uh, I, I find it's fairly accurate as long as you wear the watch in proper way. And certainly if the watch is very loose, uh, sometimes uh, you can get a very high heart rate just because you are not wearing it properly. Now, number seven is ECG. So I think this is probably the main selling point of this watch. 
because uh, they claim this watch actually got FDA approval uh, to measure ECG for you. So uh, first I want to mention that um, you will actually have to activate this feature uh, before you can use it. It's not, uh, you can't just use it right out of the box. box. And then at least in US, depending on which state you live, uh, there might be different laws in different states. So actually the, the app will, first time it will, act, uh, will actually ask you which state you are living. And then there are different activity, uh, different method to activate it. So from, from where I live, um, the way to activate is you will have to take your first measurement and then um, they will send your ECG data to some third party. I don't remember the name. It's some third party in there. Of course, you have to agree for them to share your data. And then they will say um, they will have this third party to read your ECG to see whether it makes sense or not. It may take about one day before they approve it. In my experience, it actually only took like two hours and then they just say your ECG method is approved. And then from that method, you can just start to use it anytime you want. Um, you only have to do it for the first time. Um, that's just based on where I live. Uh, I'm not sure if every state is, if is the same. I heard some state you, have, you will actually have to show it to a doctor. Uh, maybe some other state, you can just use it right out of the box. It just really depends depend on different uh, law in there. So um, I want to show you, though, how to measure it. So go to your menu, and then you find the ECG feature in there, and then we just get started. So you need a, the other hand. Um, put it on the screen. You want to like just see the still. Uh, not moving and uh, certainly not talking like me, but uh, I guess I'm just gonna talk for this time anyway. So uh, the, the entire measurement uh, takes about 30 seconds and then you will see a countdown in there. So just uh, uh, wait and after 30 seconds, it will actually show the data in there. There, almost there. All right, um, so now they can see their my, uh, I'm sorry, they can see their my ECG to be normal. And then from your app, you can actually see some more detailed data. Um, it's probably need some time to update and just, uh, all right, it's available now. So. Now, see in my app, this is the, the ECG I just took, and then you can actually play it. So, yeah. Um, and I think there's a way you can print it out into a PDF file and show it to your doctor if you want. Um, so the last thing, number eight, I want to talk about is the battery life. Because uh, uh, this is actually one thing uh, another biggest selling point of this watch because they claim they have very long battery life. Uh, I think mostly because it's an analog watch. There's an, they don't really have a big screen they have to power on. Um, and then that's probably, and then besides it's not a GPS watch. So they really did a lot of things to save battery. And, and I think in their website, they claim their battery life can be up to 30 days. But then, of course, we all know that that's just ideal situation. And then the real battery life will really depend on the way you're using it. So uh, the way I'm using it is, I mentioned, um, I only receive phone calls and text message on the watch. I don't receive a lot of phone calls, text messages during the day, of course. And then every day I try to do a, a half hour GPS workout, either run or, or walk outside. I try to do half hour yoga inside. It's not gonna take any GPS in there. So I don't think I'm a heavy user of this watch in there. So um, I think the battery life for me is about uh, seven days actually. Certainly much shorter than the 30 days they claim. Uh, I think uh, probably mostly because I turn on the pulse oxygen sensor to measure my oxygen level during sleep. If you turn it off, that's probably going to save a lot of battery in there. Um, but then my experience is seven days, which is not bad compared to most of the other brands in the market in there. Um, so by the 
by the end of seven days, the battery level is actually below 8%. And then it started to show some low battery warning and telling me it's, you probably want to charge it. So usually I don't want to stretch it beyond that point because I don't want to risk it to, to die during my middle of workout in there. So that's usually the time I start to charge it. So seven days, my experience. All right, so that's everything I want to talk about his voice. This watch, I really like it. Uh, there are certainly some unique features that um, only this watch offer that do not exist on other watches. But then, uh, as I mentioned, it's completely different. So there are some features you might miss from other brands if you choose this brand. So you just have to remember what you are looking for and you're going to gain some and lose some other things. So. All right, uh, I hope I, re I really hope my video provide a lot of information for you to make your own decision to choose which, which watch to buy. Uh, thank you for watching my video. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel.